and now we're going to talk about multilateral security. Now, uh, multilateral security uh, divides, I mean, the, the main component of multilateral security is compartmentalization. And there are two models that we are going to look at. The first one is the lattice model, which is essentially an extension of the Bella Pagella model uh, with uh, labels for compartmentalization in addition to the multi-level security it provides. The second uh, model that we are going to look at is the Chinese wall model, which is a purely compartmentalization it's, uh, it doesn't provide any multi-level security, but it provides compartmentalization only. So it's purely a multilateral security model. And finally, we are going to uh, end with an example operating system which implements strong compartmentalization. But let's start with the lattice model. So the idea of compartmentalization and multilateral security is that the less people that know a secret, the better. And uh, the idea here is the, that we, we apply the principle of least pri privilege. So as you should know as little as possible. So what you usually hear in, in films as a need to know basis. Now, the idea of the lattice model is that instead of just having top secret and secret uh, arranged in, in one order, you add these labels uh, to, to each, uh, each such level. So, for instance, you can have top secret crypto and you can have top secret crypto and foreign. And now this no longer forms an, an ordered set. So this is a partial order or partially ordered set, which means that you can go in, in one direction, but some are not comparable. So for instance, uh, you can go from top secret crypto foreign down to uh, top secret crypto because uh, that one includes the other. You can also go from top secret crypto foreign down to secret crypto foreign and then from top secret uh, and crypto and secret crypto foreign down to secret crypto. Uh, this works. However, there is no, no way to compare top secret crypto and secret crypto foreign. Uh, they are simply not uh, comparable, at least not directly. Uh, and then you can, then you get, for instance, top secret and then no label uh, which relates to secret and no label uh, and so on. So uh, this uh, is used to, to compartmentalize in addition to, to having this uh, hierarchy. So for instance, if you, if you have top secret clearance, but you don't have the foreign uh, clearance, then even though you have top secret, you're not allowed to read the secret crypto foreign. Yeah, so it adds uh, security in the sense that fewer people know uh, about uh, the secret information. Now, multilateral uh, security, that's about adding these code words as classifications. Uh, so that uh, we have, uh, instead of just uh, from up and down, we have sideways, uh, sideways direction too. So the multilateral uh, part is the sideways one. So you don't necessarily need to have these together. And uh, a classification together with a code word is what is called a compartment. So hence the word compartmentalization. Uh, and that's the, the essence of uh, multilateral security. Now, the Chinese wall model uh, was developed by Brewer and Nash, and it has its origins in, uh, in the banking sector. And the purpose of adding the Chinese wall uh, model was separation of duties. So a user may do A or B, but not both. Uh, 
Uh, so the model can be uh, defined in, in, in terms, similar terms as Bell, Bella Padula. So if we have this uh, resource C here, and uh, the owner of C is denoted Y of C here, and the classification of C is X of C, then, uh, and then the classification here is a conflict of interest class. Then we have the two properties. The simple security property would say that a subject S can access C if and only if for every uh, C prime that we have uh, that S can uh, read from, then either the owner of uh, C is not in the conflict of interest class of C prime or uh, the owner of C and C prime is the same because then uh, there is no conflict of interest. So then S can access both C and C prime. The star property says that uh, a subject S can write to uh, C if and only if uh, S cannot read from any C prime such that the conflict of interest class for C prime is not empty. So there is some conflict of interest. So if C prime doesn't have a conflict of interest uh, at all, then it's fine. Uh, and the owner of C is not the owner of C prime. So then, then we can, can write to it. So this is to prevent information leakages between these two compartments. So uh, basically the, the Chinese wall model specifies uh, conflicts of interest. So where you are not allowed to leak information between compartments. Uh, some leakage between some compartments is totally acceptable because there is no conflict of interest. But where there is a conflict of interest, you are not allowed to, to leak any information. And that's why if you are in, if you are, you are working uh, with uh, one resource which has a conflict of interest with another resource, you're not allowed to access the other one. So if you started using one, uh, then you're not allowed to use the other. And uh, if you start with the other, you're not allowed to, to use the first. So the reason it, it comes from the banking sector is because the bank, uh, banks had uh, customers, which are companies, and the companies have uh, conflicts of interest with each other, and the banks uh, don't want that one customer excludes another customer. Uh, which would be the case because that means less money for the bank. So that's why they, they took this type of security seriously. Now, one uh, example of where this is implemented, uh, this type of security compartmentalization is implemented in a computing system is the, the Cubes operating system, so Cubes OS. Uh, you can go to this URL and explore it further. So uh, in this operating system, you, you can run programs with, uh, within different compartment, uh, compartments. Uh, so for instance, in this example screenshot here, uh, there is a document uh, running in the compartment work. So this is uh, potentially secret stuff that you don't want uh, to leak. And then there are two web browsers open in the screenshot. So one is a work-related uh, browser. So this one should still not be able to, to access uh, these uh, documents necessarily. And then you have another browser which is uh, running in like an unsecure uh, compartment where you can browse news and, and uh, your your favorite websites which uh, might kind of contain uh, malicious code that might want to get their hands on uh, your your secret business information from work but this operating system uh, ensures that these um, these uh, programs when they are running so these processes are, are compartmentalized which means that they cannot access each other. So you can set that some parts of the file system is restricted to 
uh, some compartment, which means that a program running in another compartment will not be able to access those parts of the file system. And um, uh, you can also control, like for instance, that your microphone is always connected to the most sensitive one so that if you get malware, it cannot use the microphone to record conversations that you have uh, at work, for instance, to, to uh, get business information out. And that was everything for uh, this time. Thanks a lot.